So, over the past 24 hours, since the launch of Black Ops Cold War, I have got asked more than ever to dive into the backstory of Black Ops Cold War, or an individual Call of Duty game. And I will be doing that, however, I want to give people a little bit of time to actually play the campaign, experience it, and that is because this game is incredibly, incredibly confusing. If you guys didn't know, I actually have a Let's Play of the game going up on my second channel, that'll be linked down in the description, uh, also after the video and all of that jazz. Uh, the campaign is phenomenal, but it is really confusing. So starting tomorrow, I'm going to have story videos start to go up on the channel to fill in some blanks and help better explain to you what the hell is going on with this story. But technically, the story videos are going to start today. Because today, we are going to dive in to the individual operators within Black Ops Cold War and discuss their backstories. Because it is important, especially for the multiplayer portion of the game. Speaking of which, if you didn't already know this, the multiplayer in this game actually has a backstory. Chatter's Perseus is about to make another move. We don't know where or when, but we know it'll be big. Our motherland is led by cowards and weaklings. In time, the Americans and their NATO puppets will bring the Soviet Union to its knees. We will break this stalemate, then burn them both. The multiplayer of Black Ops Cold War is interesting because really most of the maps and things that go on here are actually talking of real world events. You see, the battles that you fight in multiplayer are between two forces, NATO and something called the Warsaw Pact. Basically, the Warsaw Pact was created by the Eastern Bloc, basically between Russia and Poland and some of the other countries around there, to counteract NATO and be an essential opposing force. Now, on the rest record, there has never been any true conflict between NATO and the Warsaw Pact. However, as many people know, that is 100% not true. These battles that they speak of are simply off the record. They are, I guess, what you would call Black Ops. So this is where our operators come in. As you can see, the two forces fighting are NATO and the Warsaw Pact. I'm going to start off by explaining all of the NATO characters, and it's important to note that the events of Black Ops Cold War multiplayer take place after the campaign, which is around the year 1984. So you're going to see certain characters for example, like Park, who is a part of the campaign, are actually younger. For example, born in 1952, and that is kind of how they fit in. So at the time of the campaign, she's about 32 years old. Now, let's start off with the Milsim operators. Now, I don't exactly know why these ones are considered Milsim, as they're just equally as a part of NATO. The first one we have here is Hunter. He is a U.S. Army Ranger, and as far as his backstory is, his first language is English, born in the USA on March 12th. 1957, one of our younger operators. He is the first generation of his family born on the U.S. soil. His father served as a translator for U.S. forces during the Korean War. He enlisted in 1977, volunteered, and passed selection for the U.S. Army Rangers in 1979. As far as this character goes, he's relatively straightforward. Most of the Milsim characters that we're going to look at actually are. The next character we have is named Song. Now, what's interesting here is they never give us first names. For example, this one is just K Song. We don't know her first name. Now, as you'll see, Song is a part of ROK SWC, which stands for Republic of Korea Army Special Warfare Command, which I've actually never heard of before seeing this. She was born on August the 2nd, 1958. She is a counterterrorism expert, a member of the White Tiger 707th Special Mission Group of the Republic of Korea Special Warfare Command. Song is an expert in scuba and air assault operations. So again, not a lot of information that actually ties her to the campaign or anything like that. The only thing we know is that she is South Korean. Next, we move into a bunch of really interesting characters. Now, there's one character in here that is really, really interesting, and what you need to notice is just by looking at the NATO forces here, four of the five of them are actually in the campaign. Starting off with Park, she is a part of MI6. She is English, born in the UK. Her birthday is July the 20th, 1952. 
Her description is, while studying as a young prodigy at Oxford, Park lost her brother to a terrorist attack. With new focus, she joined MI6 and quickly became one of their leading experts on international paramilitary organizations. Now, a little bit of extra information about Park. We also know that she met Adler while serving as essentially a bodyguard for two British scientists. Now, we don't know to this day who these scientists are, but after this period of time, that is when she started to work with Adler. Now, to unlock Park, what you have to do is successfully exfil three times in zombies. So essentially what I did here is I went into solo zombies and at round 10 or shortly after round 10, round 11, uh, you'll get a prompt to exfil. Essentially, you go to an area uh, press a button on top of the helicopter icon this will send a helicopter to you you have to kill all of the zombies in the area before the time runs out and if you do you can then exfil the best tip i can give you on this one is just use the spas 12 and if you can get it pack a punch this thing is insane by far the best weapon that i've used in zombies so far now you get a much much bigger picture of adler than this in the campaign and like i said we'll start to dive into that tomorrow however as far as adler goes he is a part of the sog division within the cia he is american but there is a little bit of contention there as you're going to find out in the campaign he might have actually not been born in the usa his date of birth is february the 12th 1937 being one of the older operators he is trained as a green beret adler entered the cia special activities division in 1959 after which he only appears sporadically in the agency's records well an undisputed leader he is an enigma to all that serve with him. And this is something that you're going to realize after you play the campaign, is they point you in a direction with Adler, but never really explain a lot of information. So to unlock Adler, this one is super simple. Get 10 kills with score streaks or kill streaks. Essentially, the easiest two to use are the fire bow and artillery strikes. You'll pretty much get one of each each game, and each of them will probably at least get you one to two kills. So it'll only take you two to three games to actually earn Adler. After this, we have Lawrence Sims. As far as Sims goes, he's a part of the U.S. Army and the CIA. He was born on February the 4th, 1942. He's a technology genius with special forces training. Sim joined the MACV SOG in 1967. The important part about that is that is right before he goes to Vietnam with Russell Adler, serving on Russell Adler's team in Vietnam. He always provides a steady hand and sense of humor under pressure, no matter the circumstances. Circumstances. Now, what you're going to see with Lawrence Sims is after his bout in Vietnam, he kind of pulls away from frontline service and kind of works as more of a technology expert and background role, working more in the background. To unlock Sims, you have to destroy enemy vehicles or score streaks. The easiest way to do this is equip a launcher and shoot down UAVs. Pretty simple. A lot of people are using UAVs right now. Just keep an eye open for them. And then, of course, we have Frank Woods, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but he is absolutely my favorite character in the campaign. But like I said, we'll talk about that tomorrow. As far as him, he is in the USMC, the CIA, and the SOG division. He is a self-reliant loner resulting from a youth spent on the streets. Wood trained as a Marine before entering the CIA's Special Activities Division. Years spent as a POW in Vietnam prove his sheer resilience. Now, he is born on March the 20th, 1930. The interesting thing about this is it talks about his years spent as a POW in Vietnam that technically hasn't happened yet that doesn't happen until the year 1986 and we're not there yet it, it, it's very strange that they include that in his bio what they're speaking of there is the beginning of black ops 2 when he's found in the storage container found by hudson and mason it's very very odd that they include that in his bio Unlocking Woods is also pretty simple. What you have to do is get 15 five kill streaks, basically 15 bloodthirsty medals. Pretty straightforward here. And then finally, we have Baker. Now, his first name is John, last name Baker. He is a Navy SEAL scout sniper. He was born on February the 19th, 1950. Reluctantly following in his father's footsteps, Baker enlisted and qualified as a Navy SEAL. He saw action in Operation Condor as a scout sniper. His temper never bothered Adler, who recruited him to help hunt down Perseus. Now, I'm not going to go in depth with this in this video. 
The thing you need to know is there is more to this character than meets the eye. I am going to have an individual story on this character coming in the next couple of weeks. And what we can learn about this character, I guarantee you, is going to be surprising. If you have any guesses, feel free to let me know down in the comments. But just know that this is coming in the next couple of weeks. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. To unlock Baker, you have to get 100 eliminations with a sniper rifle. I recommend playing combined arms for this. That is the fastest way that I found to do it. Also, note that it says eliminations, not kills. So even if you get an assist and then your teammate finishes them off, it still counts towards the challenge. Moving over to what we perceive as the bad guys, the Warsaw Pact. Now, starting off with Vargas S. Don't know what his first name is. Is. He is ex-National Army of Colombia M19. He is obviously Colombian and born on May 6th, 1955. He is trained in jungle warfare and anti-narco operations. Vargas joined the M19 guerrilla group to fight against the government he considered corrupt and to fight against the cartels he believed to be pulling the government's strings. This is interesting because this is the first we hear of cartels making the name Raul Menendez come to mind mind right away after this we have powers so as far as powers goes there her first name starts with j we don't know we know she's ex u.s marine corps she is american her date of birth is april the 17th 1954 she is a former marine lieutenant powers was accused of being a foreign agent and fled to the ussr it remains possible that the cia may have engineered the scenario attempting to embed her with the soviet intelligence apparatus so it looks like the cia potentially actually turned their back on powers and then she was forced to go and work for the USSR and the Warsaw Pact. After this, we have Port Nova, first name Yurina. I don't know if I said that correctly, but she's a part of the KGB. She is Russian, born on November the 7th, 1955 obviously Russian. So Port Nova was a child mathematical genius. She worked in cryptography before being inducted into the KGB. It's said that she is brilliant, deadly, and frantically loyal to the state. She represents a threat on and off the battlefield, essentially for her smart. So her challenge is a little bit more difficult. It is get 50 kills on enemies revealed by score streaks, equipment, or field upgrades. This one's tricky. I found the easiest way to do it is get kills while you have a UAV active or your field mic is active and the enemy is within its radius. This is also a weapon challenge for camos as well. So it's important that you kind of figure out how to do this quickly, but UAVs are definitely the best way. Ingo Beck is a part, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this name, of the Steinheit 9 in Service Unit 9 Division. Essentially, this is an anti-terrorist division in Germany. He was born on February 14th, Valentine's Day, ladies, 1942, and essentially his background is an expert in demolitions and bomb disposal. Beck is a tactical operator serving with the Deinsteinheit 9. It's said that he is calm, dependable, and he diffuses tense situations with dry humor of someone who regularly handles explosives. So essentially an explosives expert. His challenge is to eliminate 200 zombies with a pack-a-punch weapon. Two tips here. First of all, if you don't know how to pack-a-punch your weapon, literally just follow the prompts in a game of Demon machine. Secondly, just do it with the SPAS-12. Trust me, thank me later. After this, we have Garcia. Garcia is a part of the DGI. This is essentially the CIA of Cuba, and he was born on December the 12th, 1942. Growing up on the streets before joining a pro-revolutionary street gang, Garcia is a ruthless assassin employed by the DGI. His face is the last thing his victims see, as he coldly watches the light go out of their eyes. This is by far the darkest character that we read about. Mendo Garcia is literally an assassin for hired, hired by the DGI, or basically the Cuban Special Forces, which is an insane title to have. So to unlock Garcia, you have to play Fireteam Dirty Bomb and help your team detonate five different Dirty Bombs. So essentially, if your team blows one up, that counts for one. Pretty straightforward. Might take a couple games. And then finally, we have Stone, aka Harry Stone. He is from the UK. He is XSA his date of birth is May the 6th, 1948. He's a member of the 22nd SAS 
projects team trained in hostage rescue and CQB tactics. Dishonorably discharged, he became a mercenary, selling his skills to the highest bidder. His service records remain classified. This is the most mysterious character we have. Um, we don't know whether Harry Stone is a cover name or not, uh, but we do know is he is an ex-SAS, he's trained in close quarters combat, and he was dishonorably discharged. On top of this, we don't know of anything about his records because they remain classified. This is a character who I think I'm going to have to dive a little bit deeper into. And then his challenge... And to unlock stone, his challenge is to perform 15 finishing moves, which this is probably the hardest challenge. You have to sneak behind someone, melee attack them, and then you perform a finishing move. It's, uh, it's, it's tough to get 15 of them. Now, as we've discussed, these various missions that the characters go on throughout the multiplayer, whether that be Armada or Miami, are all actually based off of real-world events. And I think in the future, if you guys are interested in it, I would love to dive into these and actually give the backstories of these maps. Uh, we did that in Black Ops 4 because Treyarch is really good at adding backstories to their maps, so if that's something you're actually interested in, let me know down in the comments, and that's definitely something we can move towards in the future. But essentially, this was the story of all of the Operator characters, the story of NATO versus the Warsaw Pact. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. We've got plenty of more videos coming about Black Ops Cold War, so if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do so. Let me know what you think of all of the characters down in the comments. What is your personal favorite? And as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out. We are